here I am in sunny North. Here I am in Norfolk. You wouldn't believe it's July. All right, it's July in England, so yeah, you'd probably believe it. But uh, I'm, I'm here on an excursion. Excursion. I'm doing some uh, training here in Norfolk, uh, SharePoint. And seeing as the uh, sunbathing's out today, um, I'm gonna go back to my room, do a bit of videoing, do a little video. Maybe comb my hair and trim my beard. <laughs> do that before I go and see the client tomorrow. So yeah, little video on how to use Word as a form in SharePoint for anything you like, really. Right, let's get this show on the road. As this is a real world video, I will be summarizing how I use SharePoint and Flow to manage a set of user guide documents from start to finish. This is the actual document process that allows myself and my colleagues to create PDF documents that we'll provide to all the viewers uh, via future YouTube videos. I will show the structure I use within SharePoint. Uh, so the columns I use in documents are the same data I use in videos and other areas of my channel. So I'll show the site columns and content types we use to keep the metadata integrity consistent. I'll show how I encourage my authors to add the metadata to document libraries by ensuring it matches the related content that they type in the document itself. The template we use in all of our materials is bound to a content type and I'll show you how we create new documents from it and the advantages of it. I will take you through the drafting part of the content lifecycle where we author, proofread and finalise the documents. Finalisation sends a request to my compliance and design teams to approve the document which is then published as a PDF and placed into a live library where we share the documents with you. This is all done through Flow and I'll show you how this has been created. So this is the knowledge library where all the published PDF documents will end up and then be provided as links via YouTube videos. Before the documents are published there as a PDFs, the author will create the document here where it will remain as a draft safely away from other people. Using permissions, only my authors and proofreaders have rights to this library. This document is the main template I created as a basis for all user guides. Because I'm using the same type of content in multiple libraries and the same information across all my documents, videos and events, I've created a site content type that contains the site columns I need. This ensures the content is transferable, organisable and searchable across Office 365. Columns such as program code and related app are used in my videos as well as documents. If you have document libraries that contain a number of metadata columns, there is a likeliness that the users will not always update the content. If these columns help you automate and administrate the content, this becomes an issue. Not only do you need to lead the horse to water, sometimes you need to stick a straw in its mouth. With Microsoft Word documents, you can encourage populating the metadata columns by placing those columns, where possible, into the document itself as a natural part of the content. Within the template that is added to the library, I can add the metadata columns in place of key areas such as the title, the author, the subject and so on. So when the authors enter the information into the document as they would, they are actually adding it to the metadata column behind the document. If I change the title of this document, as it is saved, I can see the changes applied in the library behind the scenes. These columns or fields can be added wherever they are required to be placed in a document. The columns can be added using the quick part document properties. This works in reverse too. If I add information into the columns in the libraries, it will appear in the document next time I open it. Now, when my authors create new documents, they are greeted with the template. 
They will add the content as per normal, creating the user guide they want to release. Behind the scenes, the information I need to manage and publish the content is stored in the library columns thanks to the information they are typing into their document. The document I created requires proofreading and Amanda here is going to proof it for me. She prefers to check the document out so that nobody modifies the document while she works on it. Normally when each member works on the document they add to the comments what has been done and what they feel needs to be done as the next part of the process. Keeping these notes in the version comments centralises all the information with the document. So there's no need to keep track of any external communication or any other actions or services or apps that have been used to communicate the document's process. As the author, I'll review the changes made to the document. When I'm happy, I'll make a major version of the document. We have a flow created that automatically contacts the design team, asking them to read and approve the content. Approval of a document includes checking the content meets the design and branding structure. Barry here also checks the content is original and has no similarities to content that exists anywhere else, including on the internet. There are several tools he uses to do this. When Barry approves this, at the moment I will trigger the next workflow to publish this document manually. Um, but this will be done as an automatic process once we've seen that the content flow is accurate. The final result is the Word document is copied to a OneDrive location where it can be saved as a PDF and then transferred to the main Knowledge Vault library in the top side. Because the same content type is used in both libraries, all the metadata is transferred to the PDF copy so it can be searched and further managed and organized if required. And this is just the, the early stages at the moment of the life cycle that we use for managing and working with our user guide content that we'll be providing to you in the future. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed that video. I'm going to get soaked in it. <laughs> if you uh, want to stay in touch, making suggestions for videos that I should be uh, adding to my collection, please subscribe. Otherwise, stay safe, have fun. I'm gonna try and do both on the book.